Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be factoring a quartic polynomial. We have x to the fourth power minus 3x squared plus 1. Now to factor quartic polynomials there's a, you know, a few different ways to do it. For example, let's take a look at some alternatives. What if we had something like x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4? Now one of the things you can do is you can replace x squared with something like y and then this will turn into y squared minus 5y plus 4 which is a factorable quadratic and then you could factor this into y minus 1 and y minus 4 and then back substitute you're going to get x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 4 and that'll turn into because of difference of two squares x plus 1 times x minus 1 and x plus 2 times x minus 1. So this quartic will have four linear factors. Can we do the same thing here? That's a good question. Let's go ahead and find out. Now, can we replace x squared with something? Let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to go ahead and replace x squared with something like, let's use t this time. And then this is going to give us t squared minus 3t plus 1. Now, the problem with this approach is t squared minus 3t plus 1 is not factorable. So this method, unfortunately, is not going to work on this quartic. So we have to do something else. What is that? And that is taking advantage of difference of two squares in a different way. So notice that this expression starts with x to the fourth and ends with 1. So now my goal is to complete the square. So what do I need so that this becomes a perfect square? So the question is, I have a squared, I have b squared, what should I have in the middle? And the answer is simple. You do need 2ab. That's what you need. Sometimes you have a squared plus 2ab and you need b squared, but this time we have the end points. Why? Because 1 and x to the fourth are both perfect squared. Well, at least I'm going to try that way. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and test it out. This is x squared squared. This is 1 squared. So the term I need in the middle is plus minus 2ab, which is 2x squared. This sign is always plus. And why did I put plus minus? Because if you think about a plus b squared, that's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And if you put a minus sign here, then this becomes a minus sign. So you have a choice. Which one is going to work? We're going to find out. But this kind of tells me that it would be nice to have 2x squared or negative 2x squared. Now let's take a look. How could I have negative 2x squared in the middle or let's start with positive 2x squared? Well, if you want to have 2x squared, you have to turn this into 2x squared by adding 5x squared or actually by subtracting 5x squared. So one way to approach it is this way. Or you could look at it this way. Write the original quartic, which is x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 1. And what I want is x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. So I need to add 5x squared to get 2x squared. Add 5x squared and subtract it. Make sense? And now this part will give you what you want. x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 minus 5x squared. But our goal is, by completing the square, our goal is to get difference of two squares. Great, this is x squared plus one squared, but is five x squared a perfect square? Good question, it depends, right? But if you're dealing with integer coefficients, then it's not a perfect square. So let's leave it at that and then go with the other alternative and then we'll come back to this and see what we can do about it, just by stretching our uh, ideas a little bit. Okay, so we start with this. And this time, my goal is to get to x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1, because that is a perfect square. So now, this time, I'm going to be just adding x squared to both sides. And then, of course, I need to subtract it. Make sense? The same thing we did. We added and subtracted. We added and we subtracted. Okay. So this time, these terms are going to make a perfect square, x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. And guess what? We are subtracting x squared from this. And x squared is a perfect square. And that is just perfect. So we can write this as x squared minus 1 squared minus x squared. You don't have to put it in parentheses, just for emphasis. And then 
from difference of two squares. Remember the formula, x squared minus 1 plus x, and then x squared minus 1 minus x. Now, we want to arrange this a little bit to make it, you know, a standard form because otherwise the professor will be angry. And now this is going to be the answer. Kind of hard to believe, right, that cortic can be factored like this, but you can definitely test it out and see if this is going to work. So let's go back to this other expression that we kind of failed, but can we make it work somewhat? So here's what we can do. Even though 5x squared is not a perfect square, or in some sense it is not, but in another world, which is the world of irrational numbers, it is a perfect square. Because you can write this as x squared plus 1 squared, and this one as square root of 5x squared. And guess what? You can still factor it as x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5x, and x squared plus 1 minus square root of 5x. And after arranging the terms, then you're going to have something interesting, which is, you know, uh, which has not just integer coefficients, but some irrational coefficients as well. But hey, guess what? This is also a factoring of this expression. All right? Just another way to factor it, an alternative. Now, here's one thing about the first approach that is uh, typical. If you set this equal to zero, you're going to get the solutions, right? But could we get the same thing with this cortic? Yes. That actually brings us to another method for this problem, which I believe I applied in one of these videos, most recent videos. So you can go to solve this problem by still setting x squared equal to t, t squared minus 3t plus 1 equals 0, and by the quadratic formula, t equals negative b plus minus the square root of 9 minus 4, which is 5, divided by 2. And of course, t is x squared, so let's go ahead and set x squared equal to this, and this, and then solve for x. Now, there is a really cool way to solve for x here. Let me show you. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So this is going to become 6 plus 2 root 5 over 4. This is actually root 5 plus 1 squared, if you think about it, right? And this is 2 squared. So its square root is going to be root 5 plus 1 divided by plus minus 2. So that gives us two solutions, plus minus 2, and you can put that plus minus in the front as well. And then we're going to get, similarly, we're going to get the other two solutions from here, root 5 minus 1 divided by plus minus 2. Let me put the plus minus here so that makes uh, more sense. And let me write the other solution here, uh, maybe here, plus minus root 5 plus 1 over root 2. And after multiplying by root 2 to rationalize the denominator, we can kind of write this as root 10 minus root 2 over 2, and this one as root 10 plus root 2 over 2. And guess what? Take these solutions and pair them up differently, and then make up a quadratic from that. You're going to do it twice, and you'll arrive at the same factors. And that's left as an exercise. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.